Hello everyone. In today's video, I'll guide you step by step through the entire process of downloading a Windows ISO file, creating a bootable USB drive, and installing Windows on your PC. Whether you're setting up a new system or fixing your current one, this tutorial has got you covered. First, we need the Windows ISO file. Before we start, let's quickly understand what a Windows ISO file is. An ISO file, sometimes called an ISO image, is a single file that contains an exact copy or image of the entire contents of a CD, DVD, or Blu-ray. In this case, a Windows ISO file contains everything you need to install or reinstall the Windows operating system, including system files, drivers, and tools required for setup. You can burn it to a DVD, but in most cases today, we use it to create a bootable USB drive. This is faster, more reliable, and works with computers that don't have a DVD drive. Microsoft provides official ISO files for Windows 10 and 11, ensuring they're safe and unmodified. Let's get started by downloading the ISO file directly from Microsoft. Open your favorite web browser and simply type Microsoft Windows Software Download into Google and click on the official Microsoft link. From the website, you can select the version of Windows you need. For most people, this will be Windows 10 or 11. Click on the option for Download Now to get the Media Creation Tool. Once the download is complete, double-click on the file to run it. A user account control prompt might appear. Click Yes to continue. You'll now see the license terms. Read through them if you want and then click Accept to proceed. Next, select the option to create installation media, USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO file for another PC. And click Next. On the next screen, ensure the correct language, edition, and architecture are selected. Click Next again, and choose ISO file as the format. Now, Choose a location to save the ISO file on your PC and click Save. The download will begin, and this may take some time depending on your internet speed. Next, we'll use a tool called Rufus to make the USB bootable. Rufus is a free, lightweight tool for creating bootable USB drives. It's fast, reliable, and supports both modern UEFI systems and older BIOS setups. Rufus automatically configures settings based on the ISO file, making the process simple and error-free. Now, let's use Rufus to create a bootable USB for Windows. Open your browser, and in the address bar, type rufus.ie, and press Enter to go directly to the official site. Scroll down slightly until you see the download section. Under Latest Release, click the link for the most recent version of Rufus. For example, rufus-aversion.exe. Now that you've downloaded Rufus, let's move on to setting it up and using it to create a bootable USB drive. Go to the folder where you save the Rufus file, usually your downloads folder. Double-click the rufus.exe file to launch it. Rufus doesn't require installation, it runs directly as a standalone program. Now, plug a USB pen drive into your computer. Make sure it has at least 8GB of space and that you've backed up any important files because this process will erase all data on the USB. First, check the device drop down menu. This should automatically display the USB drive you plugged in earlier. If you have multiple USB devices connected, make sure to select the correct one. Double check this to avoid accidentally formatting the wrong drive. Next, under boot selection, click select and browse to the location where you save the ISO file. Click open to load it. Next, let's take a closer look at two very important settings in Rufus. Partition scheme and target system. These determine how your bootable USB drive will work with your PC's hardware and firmware. The partition scheme defines how data is organized on the USB drive and how your computer will access that data when booting up. There are two primary options you'll see in Rufus. 
GPT, and MBR. GPT stands for GUID Partition Table, and it's the modern partitioning style. It's used for computers with UEFI firmware, which is common in newer PCs and laptops. If you have a system built in the past 5 to 10 years, it's very likely that it supports UEFI. Advantages of GPT It supports larger disks, over 2 terabyte, faster boot times, and more partitions. If you're installing Windows 10 or 11 on a modern PC, GPT is usually the better choice. MBR stands for Master Boot Record. This is the older partitioning style, used for systems with legacy BIOS firmware. If you're working with older PCs, especially those from before 2012, MBR is often the default. Advantages of MBR It's compatible with older systems, but it has limitations, such as supporting only up to 2 terabytes of disk space and a maximum of 4 primary partitions. If your PC is older and uses BIOS, MBR is the way to go. So, how do you know which one to choose? If you're using a newer computer with UEFI firmware, select GPT. If your system uses an older BIOS, choose MBR. To determine which partition style your system uses, follow these steps. Press Windows plus X on your keyboard to open the Quick Access menu. Select Disk Management from the menu. This opens the Disk Management window, where you can see all the storage devices connected to your computer. Look for the disk where your operating system is installed. This is typically labeled as Disk 0 or Disk 1. Disk 0 usually refers to the primary disk if you have OneDrive. If your operating system is installed on Disk 1, look for Disk 1 in the list. If you're unsure which disk has your operating system, look for the one with the C drive under the volume column. This is the disk where your operating system is installed. Right-click on Disk 1, or whichever disk your operating system is installed on. Choose Properties from the Context menu. In the Properties window, go to the Volumes tab. Under the Partition Style section, you'll either see GPT or MBR. If it says GPT, your system is using UEFI mode. If it says MBR, your system is using Legacy BIOS mode. Now let's talk about the target system. This option in Rufus automatically adjusts based on the partition scheme you select, and it defines how your system will boot using the USB drive. When you choose GPT as the partition scheme, Rufus will set the target system to UEFI. This is the modern system firmware interface that replaces the old BIOS. UEFI allows faster booting, more security features like secure boot, and supports GPT partitions. If your computer uses UEFI, your USB drive will boot in this mode. On the other hand, if you choose MBR as your partition scheme, Rufus will set the target system to BIOS or UEFI CSM. This allows the USB drive to be used in older systems that only have BIOS firmware, while also providing compatibility for UEFI systems that support CSM, compatibility support module. CSM is a feature that allows UEFI systems to still boot older, BIOS-based bootloaders. If you're using an older system, or if you're unsure, this option ensures compatibility with both BIOS and UEFI systems. Follow these methods to verify whether your system is in UEFI or legacy BIOS mode. Press Windows plus R to open the Run dialog. Type MS Info 32 and press Enter. This opens the System Information window. In the System Information window, Look for BIOS mode on the right side. If it says UEFI, your system is using UEFI mode. If it says Legacy, your system is using Legacy BIOS mode. Here's why getting the partition scheme and target system right is crucial. If you use GPT with UEFI, your PC will boot faster, and you'll have more flexibility with partitions. If you use MBR with BIOS, it ensures compatibility with older systems that don't support UEFI. Choosing the wrong combination can lead to issues like the USB drive not being recognized or not booting properly. So, always match the partition scheme to your system's firmware type. Next is the volume label. This is the name of your USB drive once it's ready. You can leave the default name or type something like Windows Boot USB to make it easier to recognize later. For file system, the default option is usually NTFS, which is the standard for Windows installations. 
You can also use FAT32 if you know your system requires it, but NTFS is recommended for larger ISO files. Finally, leave cluster size as the default setting unless you have a specific reason to change it. Rufus automatically selects the best option for your USB drive. Finally, click Start. A warning will appear, reminding you that all data on the USB will be erased. Click OK to confirm. The process will take a few minutes. Once Rufus says ready, your USB is bootable. You can now use it to install or repair Windows on any compatible PC. Now that your USB drive is ready, it's time to install Windows. Insert the bootable USB into the PC where you want to install Windows. Restart your computer and enter the BIOS or boot menu. This is usually done by pressing a specific key like F2, F12, Scape, or Delete during startup. Look at the screen or your PC's manual for the correct key. In the boot menu or BIOS, change the boot order to prioritize the USB drive. This ensures the computer boots from the USB instead of the hard drive. Once selected, save your changes and exit. Your computer will now boot from the USB and the Windows setup screen will appear. Choose your language, time format, and keyboard layout. Then click Next. Click Install Now to begin. Next, enter your Windows product key. If you don't have one yet, click I don't have a product key. You can activate Windows later. Choose the version of Windows you want to install, such as Home or Pro, and click Next. Accept the license terms on the following screen. Now, select Custom, Install Windows Only, Advanced. This option allows you to perform a fresh installation. Choose the drive where you want to install Windows. If you're reinstalling, you may need to delete existing partitions, but be cautious as this erases all data. Once done, select the drive and click Next. Windows will now copy files and install the operating system. This process might take some time, so be patient. Your PC will restart several times during the installation. After installation, Windows will prompt you to set up your device. Follow the on-screen instructions to create a user account, connect to Wi-Fi, and adjust your settings. After the installation is finished and when your PC restarted, make sure to remove your USB or CD whatever you used, because it will start the setup again. And that's it. You've successfully downloaded a Windows ISO, created a bootable USB, and installed Windows on your PC. If this video helped you, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more detailed tech tutorials. Got questions? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.